Hi everybody. It has been a while since I've been on my channel here, so I thought I'd pop back on. We've been working on some drawing skills and classes, so I thought that I'd share some things, some tips and some tricks and what to do with certain materials because kids are always asking, what do you use that for? So this is a, what do you do with a kneaded eraser? So a kneaded eraser is different than a regular eraser in that it stretches to clean itself. This one's kind of old, so it's not as stretchy as it could be. The advantage to it is when you erase, it doesn't leave all of the little eraser bits that you normally get. So you don't have all of those crumbs all the time. The other advantage to it is, let me get my scrap paper. It, you can use it, if you remember what Silly Putty was like, you can use it to lift an area of a color. So if I have an area that just got too dark in drawing, I can just press and lift. And you can see that there's a much lighter value there now that I've lifted it with the eraser. The other advantage is you can shape it. So if I have a tiny little area that I need to erase, I can actually get this into a little tiny point and I can work in an area it's very precise. So it has a lot of advantages. If you or your kids like to draw, I highly recommend getting a kneaded eraser. It is worth its weight in gold and they're only, I think, $1.50. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them in any of the local craft stores. So I'm gonna share with you what we did in art class to, um, this week. We used our need, um, kneaded eraser when we had to. So we're gonna do a little value scale. So we're going to find the center of our paper by drawing a very light line, uh, aligning the ruler corner to corner and just doing a very light line in the middle. And I'll show you this up close because it's very light. There's a little X on there. Draw that a little darker. So where the X meets that center point is the center of your paper. So it helps you to line everything up. So for this purpose, we had squares to trace. I'm just going to use the edge of my ruler to create a, oh, actually I was gonna go diagonally, I forgot. Let me draw those lines diagonally before I draw my squares. Sometimes that helps you to get things lined up. And now I'm gonna use my ruler see how wide that is. I love these clear rulers because you can see exactly how wide your line is. This is actually a ruler that I use for sewing, for quilting specifically. So we had little squares to trace in class. I'm just going to freehand it. You could definitely get some squares to trace so that it's a perfectly even. But this is just a little drawing exercise to help you practice your values. And the kneaded eraser comes in really handy if you get an area that's too dark. So I'm just doing three kind of target style squares where they're all going smaller to larger. And then I'm going to use my drawing pencils to shade them in. So a drawing pencil is a little different from a regular pencil in that they have different softnesses of lead. So what you normally use, your, your regular yellow Ticonderoga, is about a 2B. B is a softer lead, H is a harder lead. With kids, I only use Bs because if you press too hard with an H, you leave a groove in your paper and it is very hard to get rid of those grooves. When you color over a groove, you often see that kind of halo effect, that groove that shows up, and it's just not a good situation. So I'm gonna start out with my, I have a 2B and I have a 6B. The 6B is much softer, and I'm only gonna use that for my darkest colors. So I'm gonna start by coloring in, actually, I'm gonna start with my 6B. I'm gonna start by coloring the inside triangle on each side and what we're going to make is a value scale let me get some paper under here 
my table not as smooth as it used to be. This was actually our old kitchen table. About 20, oh, probably more than 25 years ago. We've been married 25 years now, so I guess it was around 20, maybe a little less, because we did have it for a few years. So I'm gonna color each of the inside triangles in with my 6B. Those are my darkest darks. And then I'm gonna to switch to my 2B pencil. So I'm trying now for my next one with my 2B to get one step lighter for the next uh, area. So I always tell kids, hold your pencil in the back, not up front like you normally do, because it helps you to build up the layers slowly and it helps to give you a very smooth pencil area kind of a shaded area versus all of those pencil lines that are hard to get. And then when I get near the edge here, I would just go the other direction. And I'm kind of using the side of the lead of the pencil and that really helps to get really smooth areas. I'm just gonna go a little darker because I, I'm trying to get one shade darker than this. And I think that's gonna be a little on the light side. So if you have things underneath your paper that are on your table, my table has been well loved with paint and I'm getting little tidbits, almost like a, a, a crayon rubbing. Um, if you have that issue at home, just get a nice piece of masonite or a good quality book to work on, something flat. It'll help smooth out your table a little bit. So you can see I went one step darker. Now I'm gonna continue with this pencil and I'm gonna to try to go one step, oh, I'm sorry, not darker, lighter. I'm gonna to try to go one step lighter on this one. Again, I'm holding my pencil way back here. I'm trying to build my color up slowly Using a pencil, I told them, is, is not a fast approach to art. It takes a lot of control. Our project is a we're going to do a pencil shaded dog. So I really wanted them to practice with shading because it does it takes practice. It's not easy. It takes some control. It takes some getting used to. If you don't have drawing pencils, you can do this with a regular 2B pencil, your yellow school pencil. Um, it's definitely, you can definitely do that. It's just a little bit easier with the drawing pencils because they have different leads. So you can see how it is going from dark to light. So I would do the same thing on this side, dark to light. And on the opposite squares, I'm going to reverse the value scale. So instead of having the dark in the center, I'm going to have the dark on the outer edge. So I like to color in my edges first because then I can color in my middle a little bit faster. So this is back to my 6B, which is my softest lead, and that will give you your darkest blacks for this. And that's why if you, can, if you only wanna get two pencils, those are the two I recommend, a 2B and a 6B. They do sell pencils in a whole entire drawing set, but honestly, the 2B and the 6B will get you will get you a lot of mileage. If you're just beginning out and you're just trying to check things out and see what you like, start with the minimal because you might find that you would rather paint. So now I have my darkest dark, and I would probably go even darker because I can see it's not quite as dark as the center. My next one is gonna be one step down, again, back to the 2B, holding my pencil in the back. And I am just building up that value so that it is one step down in darkness from this last color. And I'm not gonna do the entire project for you, but, you would do the same with the other. So this value scale of dark to light is gonna be repeated over here so that it makes a really cool 
on almost an optical illusion type of project. We did ours in a, in a more, uh, we, we didn't do diagonal lines last night, we did straight lines. So the kids' projects are a little bit different, but the idea is the same and it still turns out really cool looking when it's all done. They were really proud of themselves and they were kind of amazed to know that pencils had different softnesses. So that's why I thought this is a really good thing to show everybody. So this value right here should match this value because it's our second step. So I can see that I'm not as dark as that one. That's kind of my scale that I'm going at. So I'm gonna just darken it. And it's okay, you do not need to get that color right from the get-go. It is, again, much better to build up the color a little slower. This is a very good exercise in patience. We could all use that little exercise every now and then. So, it's, and I also find this type of exercise is just kind of a zen moment for you. It kind of takes your mind off everything that's swimming around, all your to-do lists and all the craziness going on in your head and it just kind of centers you. Just a very good quiet time exercise. So that value looks pretty similar now to that one. And this next value should match that one. It should be one step lighter. And again, I'm trying to build it up slowly. I'm barely touching the paper with my pencil. It is a slow progression. And then that square we would leave white. So you wanna have your value scale going from black to white. So I'll just show you on that half how fantastic even half of it looks. That looks super cool. It would also be fun to do this with pencil on one side and then mix up some paints. You could do black and whites or you could do value scales of one color by mixing black and whites in and do value scales of paint on the other side and that would be a fantastic exercise. So now you know what a kneaded eraser is for. They're not expensive. They're awesome tools. If I got an area that was too dark, let me say, let's say that this whole square got too dark then I would just go in with this kneaded eraser and I would just lift out that color. And then I could kind of, if that was the, the color I was going for, I could leave it or I could kind of fill it back in to where I needed. So it's a great tool for lifting whole areas of color and doing all sorts of things. So enjoy drawing, getting some quiet, centered Zen time and working on your drawing skills. Have a great day.